Wilson Morales from Black Feminine TV. Hello, ladies. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good. So this movie has a lot of issues it's dealing with. Obviously, race is one of them. Then it comes to identity and bigotry and Harlem Renaissance. For each of you, as you took on the role, do you find anything within the character that you can identify with? Ruth? In our own personal character or the other person's character? Or, or both. Oh, Either so more. much. So much. Um, okay, okay, I'll keep it brief. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think, I think, I think really, as succinctly as possible, the tension between Claire, my character, who is just so um, in connection with her desires and um, has sort of like a really transparent conversation with them. Right. Mm. And mm. and then then you have Irene, who's sort of like you think, I don't know, she I don't know if she can even articulate her desires. Maybe obviously not, because, you know, what <laughs> happens um, and, and what that happens when you're not able to when there's too much shame involved. Maybe I don't know in, in articulating your desires or uncovering them, what that happens and how that can like physically crumble you, emotionally mm, yeah. crumble you, you know, because like, you know, her character is re she's kind of sick she's dropping things she's kind of like <sighs> seeing things and that's kind mm -hmm. of to me that was the interesting tension between you know how much we show how much we hide how much we pretend in order to survive how much what we're keeping inside is killing us mm. to me that's just fascinating <laughs> oh yeah i mean yeah, so many things. I think I re related, I, I can be quite, uh, I guess like I can live in my head sometimes, you know, I can be quite a, a heady person. <laughs> uh, so I related, I related to that in Irene, although it's very different than Irene, I feel a tremendous amount of freedom to be who I am and to let my edges spill over and I don't feel trapped in any kind of box, but I understand what it yeah what it feels like to uh have a harder time sometimes articulating your emotional experience and i think that's something that is hard for irene so i i understood that um i really appreciate the opportunity to interrogate self inside of work and i think there are things about both claire and irene that i understand things that i see in myself that i you know, wish I didn't, things mm. that I would like to see in myself that I don't. Um, that's what I really love about both these these women. I can only assume that, uh, that Rebecca left some of the parts of the book out from the movie and that brings some ambiguity. I could be wrong, I don't know. Um, what did you get in working with her for the first time? Because she's a fellow actor, you know, that as you watched her make this movie, that either you learn something about yourself as actors or that you can pick up and take to your next projects because as actors, you can never stop learning. Very true. Um, I, I actually think that um, the ambiguity of the film is one of the things that um, is very faithful to the book. Yeah. The book is full of ambiguity. Um, I don't think there was anything that Rebecca left out. I don't think you know a little bit just about your chi childhood, uh, her childhood and her backstory. Yeah, that's it. And uh, in in the book, they meet in Chicago. That's it. But that's it. She's she's away for the weekend in Chicago, Irene. Yeah. So there's so that's slightly different. But otherwise, it's really pretty dedicated. That's a, mm. that's the thing that I thought was so cool about what Rebecca does. Is she captures the ambiguity of the book, right? Yes. Yes, absolutely. And the thing is, the amazing thing as well is that sometimes when people are kind of so faithfully trying to render the book, it kind of has a deadening quality on mm, the translation mm, mm. to screen. And that just is completely absent. That wasn't a trap that I think Rebecca was going to fall in. And she definitely didn't. Because the extraordinary thing about this film is that, and, you know, I say it a lot because I mean it, is that watching it on the big screen, I had the same feeling in my stomach as when I read the novel just more sort of intense even because it's so visually arresting and I think what sung for me watching the film was Tessa's performance of Irene in her unraveling in her crumbling I mean it was just a woman you know I remember watching um 
uh, the Casavites film with Gina Rowland, oh, right? That film. You know, and I watched that a bunch. Actually. Did you? Yeah, That's so interesting because yeah. I saw so many sort of the shadow of that kind of kind of in our film because I just saw this woman really. I mean, I thought, gosh, I can see that that's actually what a breakdown is like. That's mm -hmm. a genuine truth, not a cinematic one. That's the truth of a, an ugly kind of reckoning with our life up to now and how we're gonna move forward. And is that even possible? And I think this was rendered in clear, um, it's a documentary. I was I was yes. uh, unraveling while we were making the movie, and it's a doc. No, but mm -hmm. I think to your question, I didn't. Rebecca was so helpful in crafting that because you know, so often when you shoot a movie, you shoot things out of sequence. So you could be shooting, you know, the end of the movie in the beginning, and and sometimes you're shooting so many different emotional spaces in one day. And and she was really resolute with me that we needed to make a document. We needed to be able to chart out. Um, because in her mind, like you said, it's also about a woman having a breakdown and there are stages to it, whether we recognize it or yeah. not. I think if you are going through an emotional time, you, if you look back, you could go, oh, oh. this is, things yeah. were happening, whether you're right. aware. And so with Rebecca, she really wanted to make sure that between the two of us, we could chart how far along Miss Irene was in, in her unraveling I guess so to speak yes but it's so brilliantly done and, and it's plotted so brilliantly between Rebecca and Tessa because like you know the audience feels similar you're you're in the middle of a breakdown you thought oh I didn't see this coming but I should have <laughs> seen this coming it had all the signs I mm. mean it's exquisite that to me is exquisite filmmaking well that's really cool <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, it's been a pleasure. It was good to see you guys in New York. Hopefully, we'll see each other again. It was so nice to see you at the party. Yes. Thanks for Happy coming. Thank you. you. had a great birthday. You had a great <laughs> I truly did. Have a good one. Thank <laughs> you. Okay.